Then I'd like to move you down here to Heimei, and some of you have been there, I understand. It's a little island group there, the Westmanyar Islands. And, uh, well, Westman is actually, well, we can still read it today, it's the man from the West. It's an old um, uh, Icelandic name for Irish people. A lot of Irish slaves were taken by the Vikings when they came over, and uh, there was this strange situation that some Irish slaves were increasingly unhappy with their master, and they got into a fight with the master, and they killed their master. And they had to escape, so they escaped to the Westman Islands, which weren't called the Westman Islands then, but there is a saga then that the son or the brother, I think, of the master then set out to hunt them all down. And so he did. And all the Irish slaves had only a short spell of freedom in the Westman Islands, and apparently all of them were killed. So it's also the site of the, a pirate attack. There was pirates from North Africa, believe it or not, coming all the way up to Iceland, not just to Britain or Ireland, where we also know of these North African pirate attacks. There was one in 1627, and they captured a whole bunch of local people and brought them into slavery for the Ottoman Empire. So, but there was a big eruption in 1973. I was only very small at the time, some of you might remember it, and um, there we have the big eruption of uh, Eldfell, which is the volcano on the island there. So here's a photo with Eldfell spewing fire, and this is Heime, and um, there we have the harbor. And you see this knob here? This is Eldfell volcano over there, and this is the lava from 1973, and there was big concern that the lava would close the harbor basin and therefore ruin the economy of the island. So what happened was that the local people sent fireboats out there and they hosed the lava in an attempt to cool the lava down. And urban legend has it that they managed to stop the lava from filling the harbor basin. It's a wonderful story, but in reality, if the lava wants to fill the harbor basin, it will fill the harbor basin. So it happened to be more of a coincidence that they just sprayed water on it when the lava was already slowing down. So here's a few images, and uh, this is the harbor basin. Here's Eldfell, here's the city, and here you see the lava progressing into the harbor basin. And of course, when lava meets the water, you get all sorts of reactions, a lot of steam, and sometimes even... Uh, explosions, but eventually the lava stopped and the harbor is still useful or is still in use to the present day. So here is a little map. This is the airfield, this is the volcano, and this is how the lava progressed. And uh, luckily for the population, the volcano stopped just in time before economic ruin incurred. So here's a few impressions from back then. The city was, of course, evacuated, and uh, nobody died apart from one rather peculiar accidental case where somebody snuck back in into the evacuated zone and died there, but uh, this shouldn't have happened. So, but otherwise, nobody got injured. Now, Sertse, some of you might remember Sertse as well. Sertse is a little island that happened to start growing off Iceland in 1963, just south of Ireland, Iceland in November 14th. And uh, this has been quite a phenomenal situation because, uh, well, it grew to about 130 meters above sea level and it allowed scientists to witness the formation of a volcanic island. And it also caused a lot of magma, water reactions and explosions and we still refer to these explosions as Sertseyan eruptions since those days. And the island is still there, and it's a beautiful natural laboratory. You need permit to go there. You can't just go there yourself. And they have actually drilled into the island now as well. So we have learned a lot about how volcanoes, how new islands form. And uh, Sertse is still going strong. It's still there, although it's shrinking. Wind and waves are wearing it down. And, uh, well, if there's no new eruptions, sooner or later, it will disappear. 
and this is why this is very important now for us to study. I should point out, we had this experience before, and there was this new island which happened to grow in between Sicily and Tunisia, and it started to grow in 1831, and within a few days, the Italians were there, the French were there, the British were there, and the Spanish were there. Everybody put a flag on it. And they gave different names to it. Some called it Fernandina, the British called it Graham Island, Il Julia, the French. And uh, the sad thing was, it disappeared less than a year later. So here's a drawing of Graham Island, and here's a plaque that was put up, and now it's, of course, underwater. So, and this is so spectacular about Circe, it's actually still there. We can still study it, but it might not be there forever. So, this is what we have learned from it. We know how the interior of these oceanic volcanoes looks like. And if you have a big island, then you can't actually look at the very base of it. So, this is what we have learned from Circe, how the very start of an ocean island actually starts to come about 